Hello, this is Sia, and welcome to another video. Today we're doing another chapter or two in my book, Nightlight. I took it out from the title of this video. We are doing chapter three. Yeah. Basically, if you haven't read the other parts, be sure to do so, because, you know, you want to be caught up on things. Yeah. I just hope this story goes well, because... It doesn't matter if it does, but I do have an unofficial sequel, but I would like to share, but depending on whether or not people want that, I have to figure out by uploading this one. But if nobody wants it, then it's not gonna happen. <laughs> anyway, chapter three. Sadness, but joy in every moment. Just so you know, there is a link in the description if you do want to buy the actual physical book. You don't have to. You honestly don't have to. <laughs> because, well, here we are reading it. There's no reason to cry. A week after Mom's accident, I was slowly walking to school, thinking of all that had happened. Yeah. Newspaper had included articles about the crash. The news and mom's condition. A while later, he had begun receiving, receiving donations from people who he didn't even know for extra expenses. One of our neighbors even built a wheelchair ramp for mom to easily navigate into the house. Near the end of the weekend, the doctor decided that he wanted mom to stay at the hospital until spring break to make sure she was still all right. He wanted to make sure that she didn't need surgery or anything too serious. As I passed another block, I didn't notice some black ice on the sidewalk. I slipped, catching my breath for only the moment. Before I hit the gold surface, someone caught me from behind. I looked up to see a red-haired girl with green eyes. My friend took off. Behind her was another girl who was staring daggers at me. Are you okay, Ariana? Nicole asked urgently. Suddenly, the other girl pushed her aside. Knocking Nicole's glasses off her face, she strolled towards me. I gulped in fear. I easily recognized the girl as Cheryl Hansen, the principal's daughter, who usually got what she wanted when she wanted it. Cheryl frequently bullied kids who were new at school, at her school. You're getting lots of attention lately since your mom's accident, aren't you? Do you really think you deserve that much attention? No, I replied shakily. Things have been really hard for my family. Don't even be jealous. Jealous? Oh, be serious. I'm not the jealous type. Yes, you are, he mumbled. What did you say? You spoiled little brat with no sense of fashion. All you're interested in is schoolwork. That's a good thing, I protested. I'm not a brat. And I'm not a brat. Can you please leave us alone? If she promise not to tell my dad about you, does she hear? Cheryl walked away. Nicole was then suddenly at my side. Why is she bothering some you so much? She just jealous that was on the news. Twice, actually. Did you won that town's art the town's art prize? Yep. Cheryl usually won first place in the art prize tournament that occurred every spring. Last year I beat her by only a vote. This of course made her very jealous and she had been bullying about me about it ever since. No wonder she's bugging you about it. We continued to walk the rest of the way to the school together in silence. That afternoon, Sue hopped happily on my bed with me. When school was over, I stared at the black box anxiously. Sue had not felt the courage to open it. Snow noticed the box, snatched it, and put it in my hand. I was shocked at this. Then she looked at me as if she wanted me to open it. You're quite smart, aren't you? Without a response, she stuck her pink tongue out at me. She wiggled a little before nudging my hand to the class. All right, all right. You want to see what's in there? You do. Well, let's open it and find out. Like Dad, I made a scene of opening it. <laughs> when I finally clicked the lid open, 
inside with a gold ring with a unique triangular sitting. A diamond shone at each point of the triangle. The image of a slippery, sliver, slithery snake was etched on the three sides of the triangle. In the middle was a circle with a star inside. The lines connected to a triangle to the inner circle. So, then I have a picture here that I threw. I had a feeling I had seen the symbol before. It wasn't positive. The silver setting glowed in the afternoon light. Inside the ring was a rolled up note. I smiled as I slowly slid out the paper and put it on the ring on my finger. It sparkled at the sunlight as it gently unwrapped the note. It was from Mom. Ariana, I know you may be wondering why I gave you this ring instead of so many others I could have chosen. I chose this one because of my love for you. Future, you will uncover. But sadly, I may not. I may be unable to help you with it. Here we go again. I thought my mind drew me forward to the next paragraph. My life was in danger once before, decades before you were born. When I was a young girl, I spent countless hours in the woods with a friend, fishing, building, and building a hiking. But my grades were slipping, so my parents forbade me to continue spending so much time away. My friend, this boy, was the one who gave me this ring 40 years ago. He got upset with me and pushed me in the creek nearby. Luckily, my dog, Copper, rescued me. Since that day, I haven't seen them. Now, I cannot promise you that your life will be free of trouble. But you will understand this letter by the time your new dog reveals her true self to you. Don't force her. She'll decide if you have to fail. Patient. The ring hold the clue. Does the symbol mean anything to you? You should easily say it like I can, for it only is revealed to those worthy of understanding. Look in the house to find the symbol where you, when you find it. Open it by touching the star. Truth will be revealed to you. This will be helpful in your journey. You're forever yours, forever in your heart. Mother. <laughs> I stared blankly at the page. Snow was looking up expectantly at me. My eyes closed as I drifted into a sleepy dream. Snow jumped down from the bed, still looking at Ariana silently as she's <laughs> she's silently up down the stairs to the first floor. Her eyes scanned for any human life. No, the girls were in their room. Perfect. She hobbled into the living room and noted the symbol of her family's crest on the wall above the velvet couch. The light crescent. She grinned as she hopped onto the couch and touched the star with her friend Pilar. A ray of light burst out of the star and snow stepped aside. And the image appeared an image appeared and on the wall. The image looked like an older male dog. Her mate, Golden. Golden's fur with a sleek brown. His facial expression was annoyed. Anything new, Nightlight? <laughs> I have not been revealed as Nightlight yet. You can call me Snow. You can refer to me as Snow. Nice name, by the way. I need to wait until it's the perfect moment to appear and make sure so. I waited nearly a year, Golden mumbled softly. How close are you to revealing yourself? Cold as I thought. Charlotte had given the chosen one her first clue. I could tell she was confused, but she'll get this one. Snow smiled. Or with or without my help. She'll know by the next month. Could she do any sooner? Golden grumbled. I'm sick and tired of waiting by the dumpster patrolling for any nearby passing shadow dogs that might want to cause trouble for you and your mistress. Patience, Snow said. May not, may not rest time. Rush time. This is the rule. Could we bend it? Golden said. Just a little. Remember Copper? She was the first to suffer for disobeying the rule. Look at what happened to her. Snow barked in noise. Of course, eating those red berries really changed her, and she had no idea of their effect. Ever since she broke the rule, it was slow to anger. The late Crescent family and his shadow dogs have been in a constant battle. She was first to fall to evil. Do you want to be like those cold hearted shadow dogs? To be one of them? All right! He shook his head, defeated. I just thought, Golden, please. It's best to be patient. It will be much easier that way, okay? Golden sighed. I guess so. Thank you. Snow looked behind her. 
hearing the doorbell ring. I have to go. We were cold and disappeared, and Snow quickly laid down on the couch to be scratched by any ears by Anna, who had brought in a UPS package for her father. Snow looked up to see Hannah looking sad. So, she spoke softly. I'm so worried after being all alone in the house with Mariana, she said. This is the first spring break with Mom. It's, it's only days before she can come home. And what will become of us then? She put her hands up. To her face and cried. I just miss her so much. Don't you ever feel the that ache after you see someone you truly love get hurt so badly that their lives change so dramatically? So did. She's seen her parents attacked by shadow dogs when she turned six weeks old. So, and she still felt terrible about it when she saw them in their condition. She also learned the youth hurt to move on, become brave. Snow drew closer to the stress team and got over her to show she cared. Snow, Hannah smiled. I love you, Snow. You're the best friend I could ever have. Snow let the girl pet her until she felt fast asleep. She knew that. She also knew that this family would need her. Much, so much more than she could ever imagine. Something was about to happen. Something neither Golden or herself could protect them from. Fortunately, that's going to be it for this video. <laughs> yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this lovely little chapter, and yeah, I will see you in the next one whenever that might be. Goodbye.